Photosynthesis is the base of almost all food chains on Earth. By converting light energy into chemical energy in the form of sugar, photosynthetic organisms create organic compounds that build plants and feed animals. It is therefore important to consider the specifics of this essential biological process. Photosynthesis requires both carbon dioxide and water as inputs. Using a series of enzymes and conversions, plus the addition of light energy, photosynthesis converts these inputs into sugar and oxygen. Here, glucose is shown as the sugar produced. As we move through a more detailed discussion of the photosynthetic reactions, it will be helpful to remember that this equation tells us that carbon dioxide and water are inputs, while sugar and oxygen are outputs. Light enables this conversion by providing energy to fuel the reaction. Because it is such an important part of photosynthesis, light must be considered a bit more thoroughly. Light is a part of a large spectrum of electromagnetic radiation, which has a great range of wavelengths. However, we can see only radiation with wavelengths between about 400 and 700 nanometers. Within this range, variation in wavelength translates to variation in color. Light with a wavelength near 400 nanometers appears purple, and light with a wavelength near 700 nanometers appears red. Photosynthetic organisms, such as trees, have specific pigments that absorb light in the visible range. By absorbing the light, they make its energy available for photosynthesis. The most important of all photosynthetic pigments is chlorophyll. This pigment gives leaves their green color by absorbing blue and red light while reflecting green light. Chlorophyll is found in photosynthetic tissues. For a tree, the leaves are this tissue. Within the leaf, chlorophyll is specifically found in cells from the mesophyll layer, in organelles called chloroplasts. Within each chloroplast, situated in a fluid called the stroma, membrane sacs called thylakoids form stacks called grana, which increase available surface area for the photosynthetic reactions. The thylakoid membranes of the chloroplast are the sites of the light reactions in photosynthesis. Embedded in the thylakoid membrane are the photosynthetic reaction centers, called photosystems, with associated electron transport chains. As light strikes the first of these photosystems, called photosystem 2, an electron is energized and sent to the primary electron acceptor of the electron transport chain. As the electron moves down the electron transport chain, it loses energy. This release of energy is used to pump a hydrogen ion from the stroma across the thylakoid membrane. The electron lost from photosystem 2 must now be replaced. The replacement electron comes from the process of splitting water molecules. As a byproduct of this water splitting reaction, oxygen is produced and hydrogen ions are left on the inside of the thylakoid. As light strikes photosystem 1, another electron is excited and sent into another electron transport chain. This electron is replaced by one arriving from photosystem 2. In the case of photosystem 1, the high energy electron is used to convert NADP plus to NADPH, which can carry that energy to the next phase of photosynthesis. Joining NADPH in the next phase is ATP. This ATP is created from ADP and inorganic phosphate by an enzyme called ATP synthase in a process powered by the flow of hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane. This flow is produced by the production of hydrogen ions associated with water splitting and the pumping of hydrogen ions associated with the electron transport chain of photosystem 2. Together, photosystem 1, photosystem 2, and ATP synthesis are known as the light reactions of photosynthesis because they depend directly on light to proceed. The ATP and NADPH 
which carry the energy harnessed in the light reactions, now enter the dark reactions, where synthesis of organic compounds will occur. The first stage of these dark reactions is called carbon fixation. In this critical step, an enzyme called Rubisco takes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and attaches it to each of three five-carbon molecules called RUBP. The result of carbon fixation is three new six-carbon molecules. Now, using the power of the ATP and NADPH from the light reactions, these three six-carbon molecules are reduced in a series of steps until they finally produce six new three-carbon molecules called G3P. Of these six G3P molecules, one leaves the reactions to be used as sugar. The remaining five G3P molecules re-enter the reaction and are converted into three RUBP molecules. This step is known as regeneration because it regenerates the supply of RUBP, which will be used in the next round of carbon fixation. Together, these processes of fixation, reduction, and regeneration are known as the Calvin cycle. As we have discussed, photosynthesis occurs in two major stages, the light reactions and the dark reactions called the Calvin cycle. The light reactions occur in the thylakoid membranes and produce NADPH, ATP, and oxygen using water and light. The Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma and uses carbon dioxide, NADPH, and ATP to produce sugar and return ADP and NADH to the light reactions. Together these reactions harness light's energy and build organic molecules that are the basis for much of life on Earth.